do it right. Right? Two packs. Wait, two two packs of seltzer? Two twelve packs of seltzer. What do you like mean the, seltzer? Like the hard seltzers. Oh. Oh. That's kind of cool. That's why we have none left today. What is your favorite seltzer flavor? Uh, mango. Mango. Nice. Mango I was expecting... And mango and then probably black cherry. Oh, that sounds delicious. I don't drink the black cherry ones, though, because they're my wife's favorite. And she doesn't like the uh, raspberry lime, and she doesn't like the blueberry acai, so I drink those, and she gets the wild berry and the black cherry. Nice. Hmm. I think I want to try that. They're really good, dude. Yeah, they sound really good. They're very delicious. Um, and they're a lot less calories than beer. You know... <sighs> Same, bro. I just found out that, well, I guess I knew it, but I didn't know. You know, like when you know something, but then you read it, you're just like, oh my God, it's real. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like looking at each can of beer is like seven is like seven slices of bread. And I was just like, yo, My life is I had like seven loaves of bread a couple weeks ago. <laughs> like, no, this is not okay, fuckface. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, buddy. We are five seconds out. Okay, here we go. Woohoo! It's going to be so much fun. I think it's going to be fun, yeah. And three, two, one. We shall go live. Live and live. Hello. Live and live. Hey! Hey! Good evening. Welcome to Uncork with Tea. I'm Tamora Israel. This is my buddy, Jace Chaporian. What's up, buddy? Hello. Ha! So, uh, Uncork with Tea is a new show that I started because I wanted to talk to interesting people more than, um, I want to talk about more than we do on Coffee with Tea. I want to go in depth, right? And I want to drink while I do it because why the F not? So on this show, um, we sit and we drink and we talk with interesting people about, we get different perspectives on life, love, and everything in between. We speak our truths here. We don't hold back. We don't judge. We don't ever fucking judge. And we have a good time, most importantly. And we talk to interesting people, like my buddy here, Jace Chaporian. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello. Happy 2021. Happy 2021, hopefully. Right? We fucking made it? <laughs> Who'd have thunk? This is not talk about it too much. Let's just kind of ride this out, see how it goes. Right? I'm still a little nervous. Like, are we, you know, I don't want to jinx it. You're not nervous. You're not paying attention. Right? Uh, so, buddy, what are you excited about for this new year, 2021? Um, I'm excited about... I'm spending some more time with my dad. Um, not for great reasons, but I'm kind of excited to spend more time with him. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm excited about... Um, just seeing what the next year brings to my wife. And we got two grandbabies. We got another one on the way. So I'm popping out uh, technically three grandchildren. And I'm uber, uber, uber excited about that. I couldn't be more excited about that. So yeah, I'm very definitely, I'm probably most excited about the grandbabies. Grand, oh my God, you're a grandfather. That's insane. I'm papa. You're a papa. Oh my gosh. Jace, you and I have known each other for, I figured out the other day, like 16 years. Right, yeah. Yes. I thought I was longer than that, but I was with Susie when I met you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you guys didn't invite me to your wedding. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't know I wasn't going to know you, you know? No, that's not an excuse anymore, okay? Not knowing me is not an excuse. I should have been there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so not knowing somebody is definitely not an excuse to not invite you to your wedding. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, oh, hey, buddy. What is... Oh, I got a good question for you. Okay. Uh, what is the one thing you're brave about when drinking? So what is, um, what do you need liquid courage to do? Show my ass. Show your ass. Anybody, anybody who's gotten drunk with me will absolutely tell you, once I get drunk enough, I will walk away and you will see my entire ass. I have seen your entire ass several times. Uh, that is one thing that I'm definitely split shot immediately brave about is showing my ass. <laughs> 
I love that that's your like drinking superpower. Yeah, it's my go-to. It's my immediate go-to. Just ass. I like it. I like it. Um, oh, so another reason I wanted to start um, Uncork with Tea is I want to talk about wine because we were talking earlier off the stream, off live stream that um, I don't drink beer anymore. Like we're both slowing down on beer because seven slices per beer. I got some roller poly happening. But um, I wanted to learn more about wine. So um, how do you pick your wine? Like, what do you, what's the one thing you look for in a good wine? Um, I like red wines. Um, and I like wines that I don't like, like, dry red wines, if that makes sense. Um, so I look for something that, it usually, like, something different and something just not too fruity. I don't like fruity, I don't like heartburning, I don't like that type of stuff. So, mm-hmm. but I, I, I'm, there's, there's... I'm sure there's not a red wine out there I wouldn't try. <laughs> <laughs> because my funny story is, which uh-huh. I wasn't going to tell you, and then I realized that if I started talking on my ass about something I didn't really know, I would look stupid. So we were supposed to have wine today. Tea mm-hmm. has wine, because tea, that's smart. Jace is drinking what he calls a Russian Prosecco. It's Tito's with ginger ale because he forgot that all liquor stores are closed on New Year's Day. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Oh, no wine for Uncorked. On the very first Uncorked, your very first visitors completely dropped the ball on that. No, it's perfect. It's uh, it's how I, I want to move forward. It only makes sense. So, <laughs> so I, got, um, I got this wine, Dark Horse. Now, when I showed this to you, you said something. Was it, what did you say about it? It's a Cab Sav, Cabernet Sauvignon, and I'm not a big fan of those normally. Word. He was like, it's a Cab Sav, and I was like, I don't. I don't know what you mean. I got it because it reminded me of Nickelback, like Dark Horse. That's right. I like Nickelback. Damn it. <laughs> it's the only reason I got it. I don't even know how to hold a wine bottle. Like, do you hold it like, this is the wine? Like, you actually have to put a white towel over your arm and hold uh-huh. it like that so you can show everybody. Okay. It like, like as, as a baby, like, look at my uh, wine, baby. That's me after a couple bottles of wine. This is my wine. Just baby. stroking its face, like, look at my wine, baby. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, ooh, what is the, when is the last time that something shocked you? Like something's just like, oh shit, what was that? Right? Last time something shocked me, that wasn't mm-hmm. like when you rub your feet on the carpet and touch somebody, like something that actually shocked me, like emotional? Uh, yes, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, that's okay. Go with it. For the first time, I think I was absolutely completely shocked at just how much you could love somebody and then watch them love something they made. It's pretty crazy. I think that shocked the hell out of me. Just, I, I don't think I was prepared for how I would feel or seeing him how he'd feel. So, oh. I think that's the last thing. I'm pretty much shocked him pretty bad. Buddy, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. So how do you feel about being a gra- like obviously you're happy about being a, a godpapa? Give me more excited. Give me all the grandchildren. Like a grandpapa. Um, I love my very much. What are you looking forward to doing with your grandkids that um taking fish. Taking fishing? Taking fish and the fish. I can't wait. Oh my gosh. You taught me how to fish. I taught both my boys to fish. Cause I didn't I don't know anything about fishing or um I'm gonna be honest, I, I still don't know a lot. Yes. I know nothing. And I, I don't want to touch. You don't want to touch anything. I don't want to touch anything. You put you in a bubble and you can just hold the pole through the bubble and that's just it. Oh, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Hey, what's up, Angela? Uh, Angelina, my bad. Uh, Happy New Year to you too. Sup, bruh? I don't see anybody, so you have to tell uh-uh. me anybody asking me anything. On this. Um, Angelina, I'm going to murder her last name. <clears throat> Let's do it. Uh, Shubeth? Oh, thank God. I'm so glad you jumped in there. I heard it. She can yell at me. I'm not positive. I stick correctly at it. Okay. She said, hey, guys, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, buddy. Ooh, I got a good question for you. Uh, name something you've learned about love in the last 10 years. It's the most amazing thing on the planet. 
Really? Yeah, my, I love, dude, come on. Anybody who knows me knows how much I'm in love with my wife. And but it also takes a lot of work and a lot of patience. But I, yeah, love is the coolest thing ever. I mean, love it doesn't get much cooler than that. It doesn't get much cooler than having your person with you through it all. Fuck yes. My person is my dog, but same thing. <laughs> yeah, you'll find your person. They're out there. I don't want them. I don't know. Playing lottery numbers backwards, but you'll find them. Playing lottery numbers backwards? I'm going to try that and just see what happens. Watch you win. If you win, I get There's a cut I have to get. There's going to be a percentage. Where if I win, I want like a woman to just like jump out of the ticket like, ta-da! And that would be great. That would be a very flexible one. Right? That would be. Yeah. That, oh my God. Yeah, I'd be, what if somebody just like, okay, speaking of jumping out of nowhere. So I live with my parents and uh, my little brother, my little brother and my dad are extremely quiet. Like they walk around the house very quietly. So when they, when they're behind you, you're just like, the fuck? (sighs) So, um, when is the, the last time someone scared the shit out of you? Like you were just like, you were just there. Like. I said to you that Susie and I hi there. Um, remember I said to you today that Susie and I were laying there watching the TikTok videos? Mm-hmm. There's this one video of this guy and he looks like he's gonna um throw a basketball behind him and and sink it into the, the basket. But it says watch this window. So I'm like, oh dude's gonna break the window. They turn around, they throw the basketball like at the screen and scare their shit out of me. I hate it when they do that. <laughs> you ever drop your phone when that happens like fuck no <laughs> and yesterday I was Mm-hmm. And I'm in my, like, on my own head, just making sure he's getting everything on his list, make sure I'm getting everything on my list. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, this little child came screaming around the corner, literally screaming, scared the shit out of me, and made the mother cry on her black. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. I mean, at least she had a good time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, a laugh at my expense is usually a good one for anybody who's had one. That's awesome. Uh, Susie's trying to jump in here. What's up, Susie? Susie. She's in the other room. Hi, buddy. Hold on one second. I'll add you to the stream for now. Whoa. Hey, I can see I you. I didn't, but I can. Oh. I knew I could do that on this program. It's so awesome, Streamyard. Delicious. Hi. Sup, bruh? Just wanna drop in and say hello. Hiya. Since you're here, I have a question for you. Um, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked Jace. Uh, name something you've learned about love in the last ten years. It's work, then it's worth it. Hmm. That's awesome. If it's real, it's work, and it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Anything worth working is worth it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, just take it off. Put on the... There we go. That's the grandpapa I want to see. Yeah, it was a fun hat to wear. <laughs> right, so how do I watch this and not be... Oh, you can go to uh, my artist page on Facebook, and we're streaming right there. Okay. Well, All right. I will go do that. Okay. I love you. Bye. Love you. Love you. Sweet balls. That was so cute. Your wife is gorgeous. <laughs> like, I see her all the time, but your wife is gorgeous. Yeah. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, <gasps> oh, buddy. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, like, maybe. Awesome. All right. Come on. All right. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. No! God damn it! No, it is a movie during Christmas. Yeah. It's not a Christmas movie. I think you're wrong. It's it's a movie, like, that happens during Christmas. But there's no... People get blown up. That's... I mean... I like that part, but I'm broken. It's the, it's the Krampus side of Christmas. It's the Krampus side of Christmas. Um, yo, I was um, I asked you earlier about three TV shows that you were watching, and one of them was Manhunt. Yo, bro, so I watched that entire series in one day. Could not stop watching it. It was so 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 good. 
when it first started, did you already have an idea of who the bad guy was? Me neither. I can always tell, like, it's the Law and Order SVU and me. I was just like, that guy did it. Did you check out, did you check out the Unabomber yet? In his own words? Yes. Bro. <laughs> he, uh... He needs some help. Yeah, the shit that tripped me out, bro. Uh, oh, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen Manhunt, I'm about to ruin a piece for you. So turn uh, it off for like three, 15 seconds and then come back, okay? So Unabomber, what's the word I just used? Uh, Manhunt? No, the other one. Oh my God, Amanda Sackett said that, I'm, I'm sorry guys, hold on, we gotta talk about this shit. Amanda Sackett said... <laughs> That Die Hard is definitely... Oh my god, Amanda Sackett said that uh, Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. Yeah, that's my Amanda, we're gonna have to talk about this shit, okay? It's not. It's a movie that happened during Christmas. It's not a Christmas movie. You're, you're saying the same thing in different words. It is a Christmas movie, you're just thinking to change the words around to make it different. I'm moving it all around like, like a mover around her. Oh my gosh. So, um, I'm so sorry, guys. A little ADD. How many people do we have on that? Uh, right now, we have six people watching, and six people gave us uh, likes and hugs. Loves. Hugs? Yeah. Amanda, it's all about Christmas, bud. It's not. It's not. Like, he shoots people. I've never been shot on Christmas. And being like, oh, thank God. I told you, it's the Krampus side of Christmas. It's, it's not, though. All right, continue with your spoiler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, spoiler alert. So, um, during this this show, at one point, in order for the bad guy's brother, who is being interviewed by the FBI because the bad guy is in the woods and they're trying to find him and trying to use their family to get to him. So, the, bad, the FBI is talking to um, the bad guy's mother and brother. And then the bad guy gets, the bad guy's brother gets very upset. And he's like, well, I'm done with this. What I'm gonna go do is Chop my arm off. And I was just like, huh? I was so confused by that shit. I was just like, why is, why is this happening? What's something like in a movie that confused the fuck out of you? Or, you know, it doesn't even have to be a movie. It can be anything in your life that confused the shit out of you. Oh my gosh, there's so many things. Right? Um, 2020? <laughs> Bro, I honestly, d and, and oh, like the being, uh, I did not think he was going to get elected. Like in my yeah, being, I just, and oh. And I, I would love for us to get to the point where we can agree to disagree and then shit still makes sense. Like, <laughs> I can... Well, I, mean, well, I, guess, I guess what he pushed is he pushed the line of what the level of your agree to, agree to disagree was. Mm -hmm. like, mm. She was like, oh, people are agreeing to disagree. I have to throw in this wrench that makes sure people know that they have to hate each other. And I think that's when I was like, I'm just yeah. stuff being a cunt. Right? Yeah. 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 And it, it kind of, it felt so so surreal like this can't be happening yeah, right now you're like you wake up every day watching a different freaking reality show just like that's that's not real did he just tell people to drink fucking bleach nah bleach? that didn't happen <laughs> that didn't happen nope alright we should probably walk past this one yeah alright let's keep it going <laughs> and if you are a Trump supporter and you want to talk I will absolutely give you a platform like let's talk about it um ooh I got a, a thing I want to do with you so I, too, love TikTok. I watch a lot of TikTok. Um, there's a TikTok challenge going around, and it is a book challenge. So I want you to grab the book closest to you, whatever book that is. You heard that? Mm-hmm. I heard it. 
Yeah. He's going to grab a book and then we're going to do a thing and it's going to be fun. And you guys too, if you feel so inclined, grab the book that's closest to you. It can be any book, whatever's closest to you. All right. So everyone grab a book. (laughs) When I finish this shit, you're going to laugh so hard. Everyone grab a book and, um, Please put the name of the book in the comments, and then we'll keep going as we go. So this is the book that's closest to me on the top, uh, Catcher in the Rye. I was just, um, well, there's a reason why. I give myself reading prompts every day, and my reading prompt today was to pick a book that was read. So it's the only reason I picked this one. So I want you to go to page 30. Everyone go turn to page 30. Amanda Sackett has The Hobbit. Turn to page 30, please. So he's going to count to page 30. Uh, Crystal is reading The Return by Nicholas Sparks. And Jamie is reading... That's a love story author. I know that. (laughs) Jamie's reading 101 Ways to Slow Down. Um, Everyone, Jamie's reading 101 Ways to Slow Down. Which I said really fast, and I think that's kind of funny. (laughs) <laughs> uh, page 30 yep and Susie is reading uh, you're 50 now what <laughs> alright alright everyone turn to page 30 that's page <laughs> so on page 30 I want you to read the first sentence um, is there a sentence on your page gonna grab a book i thought it would be so funny to do um a, a coloring book and it was but for this challenge it just doesn't work but oh that shit was funny omgg <laughs> wowzers all right hit me with page 30 and i want you to read the very first sentence on page 30 Mm-hmm. After a brief pause, Nashawada said, Your words fall most pleasantly upon my ears, Your Highness. That sentence, according to TikTok, describes your life. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Susie's page 30, first sentence says, As you do this, I have a very important piece of advice. Relax. That describes her life. Everyone hey, else. Baby. Right? Everyone else, tell me what the first um, sentence on page 30 says. And in Catch on the Rise says, the first, the first sentence is, who's your date? And that describes my life. Um, my dog and me, fuckers. That's, that's my date. <laughs> I just, I love my dog so much. I do love the lesbian TikTok. Oh my god, the thirst traps on TikTok are fucking insane. Uh, Crystal. I've not experienced that because I basically watch people scare other people. Soldiers coming home and animals. Soldiers coming home. Oh my god. Yeah, dude, I can't not watch them. Other people are watching in there. I had to keep scrolling. I'm like, I can't it's get too on painful. TikTok. Too painful. We're gonna grind for six days. For real. Uh, Crystal's page thirty first sentence says, "I've heard residencies are hard." And that describes her her life. Uh, Jamie says, um, read calming quotations. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, it looks like everybody's getting what they are reading, kind of, so. Right? It's, it's working? No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those aren't spirit fingers. These are spirit fingers. <laughs> Yo, if you know what that movie is, put it in the comments, please. (laughs) Um, All right, I have two more questions, and then we're going to get off of the live stream here, and then we're going to finish the conversation um, on voice, and then that would be on a podcast. So we're going to do two more questions. We're going to wrap it up here, and then the rest of the interview you can hear on our podcast, which I will put 
in the comments after we're done. Uh, Susie, bring it on. You're goddamn right. You're goddamn right. That's the name of the movie. Your wife is... Yeah, duh. Yeah, duh. Right. Duh. All right. <clears throat> Oh, that's so much fun. There's no in between. Oh, oh, you are a delight. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love you, bro. Colin, but all right. Um, all right. You're stranded on an island. You can only have three things. Three things only. Any three things in the world. What are you bringing? Um, you could bring humans. I mean, I think they'd be upset that you brought them to a stranded island, but sure. All right, that's one. Uh, fishing pole. Two. And a crate of booze. Nice. And that's all you need in life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, duh. Duh. Yeah. Everybody knows that, Parker. So Amanda Sackett said, <clears throat> this is a long-ass sentence that was in um, her book. So I guess that's why it took her a while to send it. Um, to the end of his days, Bilbo could never remember how he found himself outside without a hat, a walking stick, or any money or anything he usually took when he was out. Leaving his second breakfast half-finished and quite unwashed up, pushing his keys into Gandalf's hand and running as fast as his furry feet could carry down the lane. That describes her life. Does anyone else, like, use my precious to describe the things that they love? Because I do. And it's popcorn. Sometimes. Yeah, my precious is popcorn. <sighs> it's so good, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> just let me do it myself. Because they don't know how to do it right. No, Susie and I, we know what we're doing. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, getting cholesterol, high cholesterol. We're going to die so happy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're about to get out of here. But before we do, we have one last question for Jace. And remember, you can finish the rest of this interview on our podcast, which I will put in the comments. Make sure you check that out. <clears throat> Major Jis. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but it is now. Yeah, it is now. Um, I guess from now on, I'm going to end each podcast or each um, Uncork with Tea with the same question. I'm pretty sure everyone's going to have a different answer, which is why it's interesting to me. But you're the first question, qu first person I'm going to ask this question to. I have to slow down. My mouth doesn't move nearly as fast as my brain. Maybe you should ask Jamie if you can read her book after she's done. Jamie, can I read your book after you? <laughs> I need to. I need to. <clears throat> uh, Jace. Yes. What would you toast to? Oh, God. Um, just health. I, wanna, I want everybody I love to stay healthy and alive. You heard him. Healthy and alive. Toast to you, buddy. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody for joining us on uncork with tea this will be a weekly show we do every friday 7 p.m next week's guest will be zainab gilliam uh, we went to junior high school and high school together and she has um a new business called uh bougie soul food i wish i lived in new york because i would that's what i'm talking about with infused recipes delicious Where is this she's in new york which i think she's in queens or the bronx Right? So make sure you check that out next week. It's going to be awesome. Promo's coming soon. Thank you, Jace Chaporian, for being our Thanks first God. guest. Absolutely. I look forward to doing it again. He is amazing. Um, you can find Jace on his page at Jace Chaporian. Um, he is a super awesome man, a wonderful husband, a father, and grandfather now. Yes. Yeah. And we. He's my own podcast soon, so. 
Yes, look out for that. And when he does, I will definitely let you know about it. All right, guys. Well, happy new year. Stay safe. And uh, we love you. Bye, guys. Woo! Yay, balls! I gotta stop saying that. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was so badass. I loved it. That was so much fun. That was so cool. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, you killed it, bro. You killed it. Thanks. You were so I, natural. I, I, and I like to ask people a lot of fucking questions. Yeah, you do. I thought there was going to be like two or three, and then you give a couple another question. I'm like, what's this bitch doing? Ah, a million questions. Because I just think, I love the way that people think. I th find people so fucking interesting. Yeah. And I want to see how people answer to different questions. Like the question about love, everyone's going to answer that differently. Because mm -hmm. everyone's love experience is different. I find that so fucking fascinating. Yeah, and we're very fortunate to have the love experience we have. Right? You guys have been together for... Holy shit, Balls. You've been married for 16 years. We have. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. I, it is one of the things that I, uh, I won't say pride myself in because I don't pride myself. I pride us in. We both worked very hard. You know, you can both put up with a lot of things that I don't think other people would have put up in each other because of how much we loved each other and how much we really believe in each other. Mm -hmm. And that goes a long way. You know what I mean? And I've, I've, I had to learn in the last last year to shut up because I would get bothered by something and I would continue to talk about it and you know Melissa May House my friend Melissa May House yeah we were down at her house and Susie and I had, had a, a, an argument and I was really worked up about it and everything and, and Susie was too obviously but uh, Melissa just looked at me and she goes you need to learn to shut up mm. and I don't know why it hit me the way it did but it did and I have literally learned to shut up <laughs> How's that work? I guess it's working well. That thing that's happened to our marriage is I've learned to shut up. <laughs> that's what brought you 16 years. I gotta... Yeah, yeah no. more communication and sticking with each other and, you know, all the kids and everything. You know, we've had, a, we've, had a, we've had a blessed, blessed, blessed life. Absolutely, bro. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, bad, good, bad, or indifferent. We've had a very, very blessed life. Um... So I wanted to save some of the good questions for uh, the podcast. And this is the podcast right now, yes? Yep. Okay. Um, what is a fear that you have overcome? What is a fear that I have overcome? Mm -hmm. um, You're welcome. Um, geez. I don't know, dude. You got, it's kind of an on-the-spot question. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I think I've stopped fearing what my blood family thinks about me. Mm. <laughs> yes, I totally get that. Yeah, it took having to come out here and take care of my dad. Mm -hmm. um, that, I think, kind of kicked it into high gear. Mm -hmm. Because for all these people who didn't talk to me for all these years, all of a sudden I'm here taking care of my father, and now they're answering their phones, and they're asking me questions, and they're like, my opinion, there's value by them. I'm like, well, I'll screw you guys now. <laughs> now what? <laughs> How's that feel, man? Like just having that, I don't want to, I guess it is power, like having power over um, a fear. How does that feel? You breathe a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> you breathe a little bit better. You're not as nervous about things. Like, you know what I mean? I don't feel like I need to tiptoe around as much. Mm -hmm. You know, I can be, I don't need to be like, oh, you did this for me for years. I don't need to do any of that. I can just, I can just be me and just be comfortable with it. You know? And that's, you know what it's like when you're not getting along with your family and every time you get around your chest tightens and you're all you're going to say the right thing or do the right thing or, you know, talk about something that's going to upset them. Fuck them. Mm -hmm. You know, fuck them. Who cares? You got to do what's right for you. Hell yes. So, yeah, it took my, took, and like I said, I don't like the reasons, excuse me, why I'm here. I like being with my dad, but I think it took coming down and dealing with my uncle and my brother and stuff to be like, yeah, fuck screw off guys you suck <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and not suck because like I said my uncle and my aunt have been very nice to me and, and mm -hmm. uh, I told them that's a treat me you know respectfully and that's awesome mm -hmm. yeah. it's a step in the right direction exactly and it's like I mean what's gonna do it can't get worse true do you think yeah. those things happen like them being more respectful because you took a stand was just like I don't give a fuck anymore like is that no, what I set things off because I was the only one that stepped in when my father was going downhill and stepped in and said something he didn't take care of him and I 
I knew that. And everybody was like, whoa. Oh, shit. <laughs> everybody was kind of just watching from the sidelines. And I was like, no, my dad needs help. I gotta go help him. Fuck yeah. You hear that, people? If your family needs help, go help them. Yeah, well, as long as, like, well, as, long as they... With, they yeah. Be careful. <laughs> That's a slippery slope for some people. Slippery slope for... Never mind. I was going to say something weird. You gotta earn the respect to get the respect. And my father's never done anything so dramatic to me that he hasn't earned for me to be here and help him. You know, hmm. it's my father, regardless. Fuck yeah. So, yeah. So, there's that. Anyway. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, if I love music, and I know you love music too, and um, music has been such an outlet for me, and it's been um, a thing that just helps me propel myself forward. So, if you had to think about um, an album or a song that describes not just your life but your growth in life, what would that album be? Um, wow, that was a huge question. I know. Jeez. <laughs> um, wow, that's. That's something, huh? Um, I don't know if there's an album. I know I can pinpoint some songs. Mm-hmm. But I know I don't know. I don't think I can pinpoint one album. For years, my go to would have been Tori Amos. But my mm-hmm. album evolved. You know, as much as I absolutely worship her and every sound that comes out of that beautiful woman's mouth. I don't think it explains my life as much as it did. Um, there's a song by Cult Ford called Working On. Um, I think about that song. That's a, that's a big one that uh, mm-hmm. I can relate to for sure. Um, oh, man, jeez. But album-wise, album-wise, album-wise. Mm-hmm. trying to think album-wise, buddy. What's yours? Well, I'm thinking of mine. Tell me yours. Um, mine has been the same for a really long time and I haven't found another album that better describes my growth and my feelings on life better than this one. So right now, until I find something different, it is, of course, Janet Jackson. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, The Velvet Rope. That album has been so influential on me. Um, the sadness and the growth and the love and the, the spirit finding of that album has... I I feel like I grew up with it and it continues to supply me with the emotional intelligence that I need in order to continue to continue to move forward. And that came out in the nineties, you know, and it's still a thing that helps me like get recentered. If I need some time to just be like, Holy shit, I just need, huh? I go to that album. It is my huh album. Eric church. Actually. Oh. remember and like I do know that I sit there and I listen to that album from beginning to end and I'm like damn yeah yeah that's that's where it's at right there what is it again like Eric Church is the name of his country artist because you guys know like my biggest soundtrack has always been country yes <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah Eric Church not this newest one that he had uh, uh, his previous one it's the one that has Wrecking Ball on it which you mm-hmm. want a good love slash sex song mm-hmm. Wrecking Ball by Eric Church is woohoo y'all write that down I'm writing it down right now so, yep. So, yeah, Eric Church is, uh, he's, he's good. Country music is, is my, is my soundtrack. You know what I mean? That's my life. Mm-hmm. I can, I can find this country song that can explain everything from childhood all the way up to now. Why do you think, uh, country songs have been so influential to you rather than any other genre? I grew up on them. That's a good reason. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up on them. <laughs> there, there was always, country station was always downstairs in the kitchen. It was always on in the milk house on my grandfather's farm milking the cows it was always in on the cars and every truck that we went in like in every every house you could go and visit like it's country music is just what i it's in my blood pretty much <clears throat> have you i'm just going sideways a little bit now because you said uh milking a cow i just have to know because i don't know this answer about you we've been friends for a very long time have you ever milked you a cow answer for me because you gave me one of the most beautiful gifts ever and that was pictures of my grandfather's farm i remember that yeah yes that's my grandparents had one of the longest running dairy farms in the state of Connecticut. Um, and it was mm. big and it was beautiful and it was prosperous. And my grandfather passed away and mm. my uncle took it over. And then when my grandmother passed away, my father has seven siblings. Um, <clears throat> Whoa. One of the sisters really wanted, you know, they were worried about the money. So it ended mm. up being a fight and then they lost the farm. Damn. They sold it. They sold it. So. 
Uh, did, um... You can't say it's an uncommon thing. It's probably the most common thing that happens with families when, when the, you know, the, the matriarchs and patriarchs start to die off. Right? Yeah. That's, uh, terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Um, what was it like milking a cow? And did you feel weird doing it? The fr- I know it's such a, like, a trivial juvenile question, but I have to know. <laughs> when you grow up with it, it's not different. It's just that's what, that's what's done. So it's never, it was never weird to me. My buddy, that is so profound. <laughs> and I feel like it, that, just you saying that, I feel like that describes a lot of um, how people work. You know, when you grow up with something constantly and that's all you know, that's all you do until you find something different. Yeah, and those things can be good and those things can be bad because mm-hmm. everything that you're learning and you're growing up with, it, it's everything that's like, it's information, that's it's input. And not all the input's good. <laughs> But now the input's bad, you know? And then you've got to filter through all that input later on to be like, oh, what part of it's me and what part of it's not and what part do I want to keep and what part do I want to get rid of? <clears throat> hmm. That kind of work. Where did you, th- where did you learn that? That, um... Uh, right? My Uncle Bob taught me. Oh, how to milk cows or how to what? Um, yeah. How to filter and um, separate yourself from what's what you grew up with and what's different. How did you learn that? Hmm. A lot as a kid. I mm-hmm. wasn't happy. A lot as a teenager. And I was kind of kicked to the curb, so to say. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure out growing up was I going to be that sad kid who was kicked to the curb and be a dickhead like I had been treated, or was I going to be better? And I don't think I ever was actually able to make that decision until I got together with my wife and I became a step parent to the boys at ages five and seven. And that's when I finally had to be like, oh, I have to choose what to do here and I don't want to be what was done to me. So I think that's when I really started then. Wowzers. That's beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. I just, I was so interested in that. I find that, um, you know, and I, it's not an easy thing to do and it's not, you can't do it in a short time. Mm Mm-hmm. I was just about to ask. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Has it gotten easier? Huh? Has it gotten easier to do? No, it's gotten harder. It's gotten harder. Yeah. It's gotten harder. Well, no, I guess it's not. I guess thinking about what could have been has gotten harder. Like mm. being like, wow, I made it through that and I chose not to make this decision or this decision or this decision that would have ruined my life, killed me fuck somebody else up, whatever. And I made the decision for the most part, and I'm not like, obviously I'm far, 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 far from perfect, but I made the, I was able to make decisions that no matter how they looked at the time have worked out to give me the life that I have. And the life that I have is pretty awesome authenticity. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fortunate guy. Fortunate guy. Fortunate guy. Um... Oh, okay. So I guess last question, and then I'll let you go. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate your time today. I can't wait to ask me to do this again. I've enjoyed this more than I ever thought I would. Yay, boss! I love to have fun, but I've enjoyed it way more than I thought I was going to. I'm so glad. Um, so what's the last thing that made you go, for fuck's sake? That's not, that wasn't political. The last thing that's just like, for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. Now, please understand this is my father. He goes, You never know, he was an Afro American. And I went, Did you just? And I couldn't say anything. I couldn't even make a response. I literally just picked up my phone to text my wife, and I'm like, This motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> Like, no. Not, I mean, it's racist. You're being like uneducated. Like, wrong word altogether, buddy. Nice try. 
try. We have some wonderful bodyguards. <laughs> Touching that one. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And that, that and that that was what the fuck in such a broad span for me because I'm like him, me, how? Yeah, how? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah for that, fuck's that sake. That was my last what the fuck moment. If you want to talk about recent, we're talking about this was hours ago. Oh, good. Good. In 2021. That's great. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. This is a wrap. Um, thank you so much, man. Is there anything you want to plug or anything you want to talk about before we go? I just I want people to try to kind of keep an eye out because he is going to help me start my own podcast, which is basically going to be just kind of like talking shit with Jace. Like, we're going to sit around, ask questions, talk shit, drink some alcohol, have a good time, and uh, hopefully it takes off. Fuck yeah. We will definitely tell you guys about that when it happens. Um, um, for sure. And he's a, a great guy and really fun. Um, you have, like, a really... You know, like some people you could just talk to and like relax around. It's a it's an aura that you have to have. Like it it's no other reason. It's no other way to get it. Like you have that aura. People are just like, okay, I could talk to this guy. So I think Thank you'll you. do great. Yay balls. Thank you very much. I had a blast, buddy. All right. Thank you guys for listening to Uncork with We will see you again next week. Happy New Year. Deuces. Ha ha.